There are a lot of travel credit cards out there, but some are just better than others. I have compiled a list of 11 travel credit cards that have some interesting enough benefits, credits, or perks that made me add them to this list. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they are that great of a card. So let's dive in and rank all of these cards. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to see more videos like this in the future. We will use a simple tier list, ranging from D tier, being not that great, to S tier, being better than great. Starting off, let's take a look at the Built MasterCard. This card is not normally talked about as a travel credit card, but I'll come back to that in a bit. Normally this card is known for its ability to pay rent and earn rewards. The Built MasterCard is the first credit card that allows you to pay your rent without incurring any processing fees. This card has no annual fee, which makes it a great option for many people. With the Built MasterCard, you're going to earn 3x back on dining, 2x back on travel, and 1x back on everything else. And on top of that, you're going to earn double points on rent day, which is the first day of each month. This means you'll earn 6x back on dining, 4x back on travel, and 2x back on everything. Unfortunately, you won't be earning double on rent. That will still be 1x back. Now shifting focus to the travel aspects of this card, we'll see that we actually get a pretty nice range of insurance and protections with the built MasterCard. You'll receive trip cancellation and interruption insurance, trip delay reimbursement, auto rental collision and damage waiver, along with a cell phone protection. The built MasterCard also has no foreign transaction fee, along with a $5 Lyft credit after you take three Lyft rides in a month. Now when it comes to ranking this card, I'm going to put it into the A tier, and here's why. The built MasterCard has a lot of transfer partners, with notable partners being American Airlines, United, World of Hyatt, Marriott Bonvoy, and many others. Many of these partners are only available as transfer partners on credit cards with annual fees. So because this card has no annual fee and allows you to transfer points to so many partners, it gets an A rating for me. Next up, let's take a look at the Capital One Venture card. This is the little brother to the Capital One Venture X card, which we'll talk about next. The Venture card is a mid-tier travel credit card with a $95 annual fee, but still has a lot to offer. With this card, you're going to earn 5x back on hotels and rental cars booked through the Capital One Travel Portal, then 2x back on everything else. With 2x back on everything, this card has the potential to earn a lot of points and could even be a catch-all card in a credit card setup. The Venture card also offers a very nice 75,000 point welcome offer, which is on the higher end for mid-tier credit cards. Those 75,000 points are going to be worth $750 when used inside of the Capital One Travel Portal at a rate of one cent per point. Now the Venture Card has access to Capital One's transfer partners, where you can find two or even three cent per point on redemptions. Now let's take a look at the benefits that you get with this card. First up, you're going to have access to the Capital One Lifestyle Collection, which is a curated collection of hotels that Capital One has partnered with to offer some exclusive benefits to its cardholders. Those benefits are a $50 experience credit, room upgrades when available, and early check-in and check-out. You'll also receive Hertz 5-star status, a global entry or TSA pre-check credit, no foreign transaction fee, along with some insurance and protections. Now this card is pretty basic, but still offers a nice welcome offer and low annual fee. However, because there are no credits offered on this card, aside from the global entry or TSA pre-check credit, I'm going to have to put this card in a C tier. I want to be able to put it higher, but without a way to bring down our effective annual fee, it's going to get a lower rating for me. Next up, we have the Capital One Venture X. The Venture X is an excellent travel credit card with a low annual fee and nice benefits that help push it into the premium travel credit card tier. On the Venture X, you will find a $359 annual fee, along with a 75,000 point welcome offer after spending $4,000 in the first three months of card ownership. This welcome offer is worth $750 when viewed at one cent per point. In terms of multipliers, the Venture X is going to earn 10x back on hotels and rental cars booked through the Capital One Travel Portal, 5x back on flights booked through the Capital One Travel Portal, and 2x back on everything else. 
With this card, you're going to receive a $300 travel credit that you can use for purchases made inside of the Capital One Travel Portal. Next up, you're going to receive a 10,000 mile anniversary bonus every year that you keep the card open. This bonus is worth $100. These two credits give the VentureX a positive $5 effective annual fee. You're also going to receive a Global Entry or TSA PreCheck credit, Capital One Lounge Access, Plaza Premium Lounge Access, Priority Pass Lounge Access, Insurance and Protections, and more. I just made a video about this card last week. After this video, you can go check out that video where I talked about this card in depth. In that video, I talked about how awesome the Capital One Lounge is and how much I love the positive $5 effective annual fee. Because of that, this card goes in the S tier category. Whenever a credit card can cover its own annual fee and offer more on top of that, it's usually an S tier card for me. Next up, let's talk about the Chase Sapphire Preferred. The Chase Sapphire Preferred has a $95 annual fee and a current welcome offer of 60,000 Chase Ultimate Reward Points. These points are going to be worth 1.25 cents per point, making this welcome offer worth $750. The reason these points are worth a little bit more is because the Sapphire Preferred has a benefit that makes your points worth 25% more when used inside of the Chase Travel Portal. This is a nice perk that works as a great fallback when you're looking for point redemptions. In terms of multipliers, you're going to be earning 5x back on purchases made inside of the Chase Travel Portal, 3x back on dining and online groceries, 3x back on select streaming, 2x back on all other travel, and 1x back on everything else. With the Sapphire Preferred, you're going to receive a $50 hotel credit for hotels booked inside of the Chase Travel Portal. You're also going to receive travel insurance and protections, no foreign transaction fee, and the best benefit, access to the Chase Transfer Partners. So where do I rank this card? Well, I think I'm going to put it in B tier. It does give access to the Chase Transfer Partners, but that's about the only thing I use this card for. I certainly think people should get this card for that welcome offer and access to the Transfer Partners. Moving on, let's take a look at the Chase Sapphire Reserve, the big brother to the Sapphire Preferred. With this card, you're going to have a much larger annual fee of $550 and a current welcome offer of 60,000 Ultimate Reward Points after spending $4,000 in the first three months of card ownership. Now, it does look a little bit funny at first glance that this card has the same welcome offer as the Sapphire Preferred. And I would agree, but the Sapphire Reserve also offers a points bonus when you use your points inside of the Chase Travel Portal. However, on this card, you get a 50% bonus, which gives you a redemption of 1.5 cents per point. This is a great redemption, and I would always be happy with that cent per point ratio. With this card, you're going to earn 10x back on hotels and rental cars booked through the Chase Travel Portal, 5x back on flights booked through the Travel Portal, 3x back on dining and all other travel, 10x back at Chase Dining, and 1x back on everything else. Now the Sapphire Reserve offers lounge access in the form of a Priority Pass membership, along with access to the Chase Sapphire Lounge. You will also receive a Global Entry, TSA PreCheck, or Nexus credit, along with access to Chase's transfer partners. Now the best benefit that this card offers is a $300 travel credit that is by far the most flexible credit out there. This credit can be used for just about anything travel related, including flights, hotels, rental cars, cruises, and more. Because of that travel credit and the 50% point bonus, I'm going to put this card in the A tier. I currently have the Sapphire Preferred, but I have certainly considered upgrading it to the Sapphire Reserve to get access to those benefits. Now let's talk about a card that doesn't get talked about that often, the City Premier card. This card is City's only real travel credit card option at the moment, and unfortunately, it's only a mid-tier category card. City had a premium travel credit card called the Prestige card, but it was discontinued in 2021. There have been some rumors about a new card, but at the moment, those are just rumors. But back to the Premier card. This card has a $95 annual fee and a current welcome offer of 60,000 City Thank You Points after spending $4,000 in the first three months of card ownership. City Thank You Points are worth one cent per point, which would make this welcome offer worth $600. The City Premier card is actually the travel credit card in the City Trifecta, along with the City Double Cash and Custom Cash cards. Those two cards are actually pretty great cards. 
The City Premier Card earns 10x back on hotels and rental cars booked through the City Travel Portal until June 2024, 3x back on air travel, restaurants, gas, and supermarkets, then 1x back on everything else. The Premier Card offers an annual hotel credit worth $100 that you can use towards hotels purchased inside of the City Travel Portal. However, you do have to spend $500 to actually get this credit. You will have access to City's transfer partners as well. There's also no foreign transaction fee on this card, but that's about it. It's pretty bare. Because of that, I have to put this card in the D tier. There's just not enough here to justify this card or give it a higher ranking. Now let's talk about a card that I've never talked about on this channel, the Wells Fargo Autograph Card. This card is on my list for one main reason, and that's the possibility of transfer partners in the future. Recently, there have been some rumors floating around about a new Wells Fargo card called the Autograph Journey Card, and it would be coming with transfer partners. And the hope would be that this card would also have access to those transfer partners. As of now, the card is not that bad. The card has no annual fee and a current welcome offer of 20,000 points worth $200 after spending $1,000 in the first three months of card ownership. You're going to earn 3x back on restaurants, flights, hotels, rental cars, and other travel purchases, gas, transit, popular streaming, and phone plans. Then 1x back on everything else. There are also a few nice insurance and protections on this card. Those benefits alone would actually make this a pretty great card if we had access to the transfer partners. Perhaps it'll be like the Capital One Saver One card, where you need to have the Venture X to be able to transfer your cash back two miles. Only time will tell whether or not that happens. I'm going to put this card in B tier because of the multipliers, no annual fee, and the potential of transfer partners in the future. Next up, another card that I have not talked about on this channel, the Bank of America Premium Rewards Elite Card. This card has a lot of potential, but is limited, like the last card, by the lack of transfer partners. In my opinion, the Bank of America Premium Reward Elite Card falls into the Premium Travel Credit Card tier, with an annual fee of $550 and a nice welcome offer of 75,000 points after spending $5,000 in the first 90 days of card opening. Now this card earns 2x back on travel and dining, then 1.5x back on everything else. However, those multipliers could be higher if you are a Preferred Rewards member with Bank of America. This card offers a few nice credits that you can use to bring down the effective annual fee, including a $300 airline credit for things like baggage fees, seat upgrades, lounge access fees, and more. You'll also receive a $155 credit for streaming services, food delivery, fitness clubs, and rideshare services, as well as a $100 credit for TSA PreCheck or Global Entry. This card also offers a 20% discount when you use your points to book an airline ticket of any class. You'll also receive four Priority Pass Select memberships with this card, along with access to insurance and protections, and you'll have the ability to take your rewards as cash back if you would like. I actually really like what this card has to offer, but without transfer partners and low base multipliers, I'm gonna have to put this card in the C tier. Transfer partners are where we can find three, four, five cents per point or better, which is why it's a huge deal to be able to have them when booking a trip. Now the final three cards that I have on this list are the American Express Green Card, Gold Card, and Platinum Card. In the American Express lineup, the green card is the mid-tier travel credit card with a $150 annual fee. The current welcome offer on this card is 40,000 membership reward points after spending $3,000 in the first six months of card ownership. The green card actually has some pretty nice point multipliers, including 3x back on travel, including flights, hotels, tours, campgrounds, rental cars, cruises, vacation rentals, and more along with 3x back on transit, including trains, taxis, rideshare, ferries, tolls, parking, buses, and subways. You'll also earn 3x back on dining and 1x back on everything else. Certainly a very packed multipliers list. The green card also offers two main credits, including a $189 clear credit, a $100 lounge buddy credit for access to lounges in that network. The green card does offer a few insurance and protections, along with no foreign transaction fee and access to the American Express list of transfer partners. Now, I would like to see this card get a refresh. It would be nice to see this card get a credit for everyday use, like a dining credit. 
I'm going to put this card in the B tier because it has a lot of potential if you combine it with the Everyday Preferred card. You can go check out that video I made right here. Next up is the American Express Gold card. This is one of my favorite credit cards and has earned me thousands of points, which is actually why it's on this list. While not directly a travel credit card, it does earn a lot of points that we can use towards travel, which I guess makes it a travel credit card. The Gold card has a $250 annual fee and a current welcome offer of 60,000 to 75,000 membership reward points. In terms of multipliers, you're going to earn 4x back on restaurants and groceries, 3x back on flights booked directly with the airline or through Amex Travel, then 1x back on everything else. The Gold Card offers two credits to help offset our annual fee. The first one is a $120 dining credit in the form of $10 each month. You can use this for purchases made at Grubhub, The Cheesecake Factory, Gold Belly, Wine.com, Milk Bar, and Select Shake Shack locations. Then, you'll also receive a $120 Uber Cash credit that is deposited directly into your account. When I have the Gold Card, I like to use the Uber credit for Uber Eats. Now, because this card has a great effective annual fee if you can use all the credits, along with the points earning potential, this card is going in S tier for me. And finally, the American Express Platinum Card, often called the king of travel credit cards. There are a ton of perks and benefits offered on this card, and for $695, I would sure hope so. The Platinum Card is one that I currently have, and I recently upgraded it from my Gold Card. I talked about that in a previous video, I'll link it right over here so you can go check that out. In that video, I went in depth on all of the credits and benefits that this card has, but I'll summarize it real fast. The Platinum Card has a welcome offer from 80,000 points to about 125,000 membership reward points after spending $8,000 in the first six months of card ownership. With this card, you're going to earn 5x back on flights booked directly with the airline or through Amex Travel as well as 5x back on hotels booked through the Amex Travel portal, then 1x back on everything else. The Platinum Card is going to give you a lot of lounge access to lounges like the Centurion Lounge, Delta Sky Club, and more. You're also going to receive Hilton and Marriott Gold status along with car rental status with Hertz, Avis, and National. Now the Platinum Card has over $1,500 in credits that you can take use of. For me, I can use about $650 of those credits, which helps lower my effective annual fee. So where do I rank this card? Well, I'm going to put it in the A tier. I think this card has so much to offer, and I know some people just don't like this card, and that's totally fine. In fact, I would love to hear from you. Where would you rank all of these cards? Does it match my list? Comment down below. If you like this video, hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this in the future. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.